Well, once again, my shop is a big mess. Well, it's not going to solve all of my problems, but it's going to go a long ways to keeping the top of my workbench clear. And that's this right here. I talked about this in an earlier video. I said I was going to build it, and here it is. So the idea is that I would make a hanger for the tool and then mount it to one of these strips. All I need to do is slide it out, mount the tool holder on, and then slide it back in. And then I could put the tool on, and it would be good to go. And I could do that right across. I can cut these strips as short as I need to. All across the bottom here I have bins and what those are for are for the screws that I commonly use. Uh, I have uh, my sanding table over there that has pull out bins with the screws that I normally use. The problem is that I pull out the bin and I bring it to where I'm working and that's where it stays until I put it back and that might be you know several days later. I reached the end of my rope when I tipped one over and I had to clean it up off the floor and I said enough of this. What I really need is a series of bins like this that will hold just enough screws to use as I'm doing a project and they're always there and they're covered over like this so that they don't fill up with dust. Well, unfortunately I don't have any of the tools up here yet. I really ran out of time this week. I'm not feeling very well. I'm going to cold. And uh, another thing, I don't want to rush the tool spacing on this. I want to carefully lay everything out, take a couple hours and figure out exactly where everything's going to go up here, the things that I normally use, and then make holders for them and mount them up here. And that way I won't have to, you know, spend time in the future changing everything again. And I'll have still have space to add new tools in as I get them. Now that you've seen how the project turns out, I'll show you how I made it and that's coming up next. For this project, I'm using half-inch spruce sheathing. There are other grades of plywood available, but this one is the cheapest and looks pretty good if you're willing to do some extra work. First thing I need to do is cut the full sheet down to 6 feet long. I want this to be the total length of the unit. I can flip it over and do some light sanding on the side that looks the best. Next I cut a strip off the top and that will be used later to make the bins. There's an outlet in the wall where the board will go so I need to cut a hole in the right place for that. To hold it up on the wall until I can get it fastened I'm driving two screws for it to sit on. Then I can bring it in and set it on the screws. To hold it in place for now, I'm driving two finish nails into a stud. And with the two nails holding a sheet on the wall, the screws can be taken out. Next, I can cut the other sheet into strips. The first one is 8 inches wide, and the rest of the slats are 2 and 3 quarters. I picked the better looking sheet for this one, since more of it will show. To make these parts completely smooth, I'm running them through my planer. The end that was cut off the second sheet is cut up next to make parts for the bins. And I plane these smooth as well. All of the plywood parts for the bins are 4 inches wide and space 4 inches apart, making it hard to make a mistake. To assemble the bins, U-shaped sections are made by joining three squares together with glue and nails. I'll get some glue on the first one and nail the bottom panel on. The next one is spaced 4 inches over and nailed on. I'm doing 4 from each end and that leaves a single divider to put in the middle. 
Next, the top panel can be glued and nailed on. I'm using one and a quarter inch nails for this. A little sanding on the exposed plywood edges is a good idea. To finish assembly on the bin section, I've cut solid wood trim to go on the front. I'll do a little more sanding on the top. Knock the sharp corners off and it's ready to mount on the backer board. Two inch screws are driven through two studs in the walls. These work to hold the bins unit in place and the backer board up on the wall. The first panel to install above the bins is the 8 inch strip I cut earlier and is attached with construction adhesive and 3 quarter inch brads. Here I'm lowering my blade and adjusting the fence to cut a rabbit in the back of all of the slots. To mount the slats on the board, I've cut some half inch spacers. Get some glue spread and drive more 3 quarter inch brads to fasten each slat. I'm using 3 quarter inch brads to make sure that they don't go all the way through the backer board and into the wall. Now I can do the same for the rest of the slats, spacing them a half inch apart. When they've all been put on, I can give the surface a light sanding and slightly bevel the corners on all the slats. Two more 2 inch screws are driven in the top corners to finish attaching it to the wall. To keep it looking clean, I'm brushing on a coat of satin polyurethane. The next day, I got to work cutting the strips that fit in the slots. These are made from spruce 2x8 that has been drying in my shop for more than a year. It's a good idea to have a well seasoned supply of this on hand for these kinds of projects. These are cut into pieces that are 3 quarters by half inch. Then it's over to the router table to cut a rabbit in each one. And here's how they fit. I can get all of the strips put in for now. These will be removed as needed, cut to the right length for the specific tool holder that will be attached, and slip back in. The idea is that all of the slot spaces will be filled so that dust can't get in. Over the next few days I'll be loading it up with tools and there'll be more details on that on my website and in future videos. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.